What is Cafe Mocha? Experts, celebrities, music and features from a woman's perspective. Intriguing conversation, the swag award, espresso, the MC light mix. Radio from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Cafe Mocha. This is Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique, joined by Lonnie Love. And in studio, our celebrity mom and my new girlfriend, Nicole Ari Parker. This weekend, we're asking, did we fail the next generation? No. Well, there's a lot to talk about when we come back on Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. This weekend, we're asking, did we fail the next generation? You know, we see everybody and all the parents are getting mad about the pants sagging Mm -hmm. and the twerking and cussing in front of the elders. I mean, has it gotten out of control and is it our fault? Yeah, it's our fault. You know what I'm saying? You take away some of them PlayStations Uh and and make them read some books and stuff, maybe, and stop letting them talk back to you, you know? Are these parents too busy working and trying to make money? Are we too busy trying to be hip and too, and, and young and or instead of disciplining our children or are we just too busy trying to be friends with our kids instead of their leaders all of that uh, you know I agree I have a 20 year old niece and she- I watch her do things and I don't want to discipline her and I really can't because A, I wasn't around when she was growing up because I was too busy out making money and now she doesn't see me like the age I am. She thinks I'm younger and I think it's cool. So, like, I don't I don't want to be an adult to her. Well, let's so, hear from an uh, actual parent, Nicole Ari Parker. What? How do you feel about this, seriously? Well, I think that basic respect should be the baseline in any household Mm -hmm. you know you you can't we nip the back talk in the butt and it starts my kids are at the age where it's starting Mm -hmm. what you call Sophie what no Mm -hmm. I don't let anything slide because you know I want her to be a citizen of the world and move through all kinds of scenarios in the world with grace and class Mm -hmm. that's something that I've personally am going to invest in my children Mm -hmm. grace and class I like that you know and so exactly I mean, you can't be too busy for that. Yes, sometimes cartoons, it helps when you just need to lay down or you right. need to take a break. Or, But I am not going to leave my children in front of the TV all day and, right. not, and not guide them through other options. Right. It's, it starts young is what I'm trying to say. Right. That's the truth. It That's starts true. young. On the way, Dr. Al Tart joins us to talk about and answer the question, did we fail the next generation and what can we do about it? It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. I'm Angelique. I'm Lonnie Love. And I'm Nicole Ari Parker. This weekend's topic, did we fail the next generation? To help us with this, he's a psychologist and an author, Dr. Al Duan Tart, one of our favorites. Dr. Tart, where did we go wrong? I mean, first of all, have we failed the next generation is the question. One, I think that we have. Okay. The research shows that we're spending less face time with our kids than ever before. Black and white. Black and white, which means that we're working more. And even when we're home, we're not really spending one-on-one focused time with our kids. We're multitasking on social media, on bringing work home, on trying to spend time with all the kids at once mm-hmm. versus one-on-one. We're not giving kids the time and the attention that they need to prosper and grow. Hmm. Now, how much do you think divorces and broken families or never had a family play in this Or these whole- blended families. Well, two different, two different topics. I think, one, you only know what you know. Meaning that if you didn't come from a family in which there was a ritual for family dinners, spending time together, family meetings to discuss problems versus not speaking, then you don't know to do that. Right. And then number two, when you start talking about blended family, the research shows that it takes three to five years to really get into a groove as a new family because you bring your culture from the previous relationship and try to mix it and it takes at least three years to come up with your own new culture so there's automatic conflict when you start blending families. It's Cafe Mocha. We're on the line with Dr. Tart asking the question, have we failed the next generation? Uh, Dr. Tart, how do we fix this if we're failing? How do we as adults, as parents, even me as a single woman, how do we help fix 
the next generation. I'll tell you how we fix it. It takes an hour-long written test to get a driver's license, but nothing to become a parent. Hello. We need help. We need doc- people like Dr. Tart to really start outreach, and, and I think there should be pamphlets passed out at the clinic. How to be a mom. Yeah, just some basic stuff, because like he said, not a lot of people even know what a dinner, a cooked dinner around the table looks like. Yeah, I agree. I think we have to go. I love that idea. I think there should be mandatory parent training. Because parents don't know developmental milestones, parents don't know structure, timing, how to improve kids' grades. And, and, and remember, relationships and parenting is hard. You know, parenting one kid gives you no no advantage in parenting another, especially if you're parenting a girl than a boy. So I think it's about spending time together on a daily basis, improving your parent training. And then as a as someone without a family, I think it's okay for us to go back to the village and start mentoring 12 to 1 on the discipleship model and make that part of our culture to make sure that kids without proper family time at least get it in the community. Hey, it's Cafe Mocha. We're asking, did we fail the next generation? More with Dr. Tart coming up. Let's get back to the music now. Now, Cafe Mocha, radio from a woman's perspective. It's Cafe Mocha. We're on the line with Dr. Tart talking about how we fail the next generation. Dr. Tart, can you give us five ways or five tips to help bring the generation back? Absolutely. According to a book by Paul Tuff called How Children Succeed, he said there's five characteristics we have to teach our children. Number one is ambition. Mm. Number two is professionalism. It's about working hard every day with a proper attitude. Number three is integrity. Number four is resourcefulness. And most importantly, number five is resiliency and grit. The research shows that the people that are at the top are not the smartest. They didn't come from the best families. They're not rich. They're the ones that have the most resiliency and grit. And that is something as as teachers, as parents, we must teach our kids how to bounce back from adversity. That's the only way to be successful. Life's going to knock you down, but you got to get back up. I love it, Dr. Tart. As a parent, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dr. Tart, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. We always learn something from you. You can um, get in touch with Dr. Tart on drtart.com. More Cafe Mocha when we come back. Cafe Mocha. We're socially savvy. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Cafe Mocha Radio. Experience the flavor at CafeMochaRadio.com. Backstage at After Midnight with Dulé Hill, who I love you in sight. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, what made you, you know, pause that for a second and come and do Broadway? Uh, well, we had finished filming in August, so I had to fit in the schedule anyway. And I love, I started here in musical theater in New York, right here on Broadway, understudying Savion Glover and the Tap Dance Kid. Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah, so anytime to come back and be around amazing dancers and amazing music and amazing singers like Fantasia, it doesn't happen too often in life, so you have to jump at it when the opportunity presents itself. How is it working with Fantasia? Oh, well, I love her dearly. She's a phenomenal talent. Her spirit is, I think her spirit exceeds her talent. Okay. You know, uh, I really enjoy coming to work every day and, and hanging out with her. I'm definitely going to miss her dearly as she moves on to her, her next stage. Now, are you staying for the run, or how much longer are you running? Not for the run. I'll be here for a little while longer. Okay. I'm at least here until March, and then we'll see what happens after that. Uh, Psych the Musical. I taped it. I still haven't seen it yet. Um, what on earth made you guys go there? You know, it's uh, our show creator, Steve Franks. He has a he's a songwriter. Okay. And beyond being a, a TV series writer and a, and a film writer, he's a he's a songwriter. And he saw that all the time off stage, we were always singing songs and acting fool. So he said, I would like to do a musical. So he did it. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the thing that can happen when you are the show creator of a of a hit show. Right. You pretty much say you want to do something and then you make it happen. Whatever. And then you're on a network where you can actually do that. Yes, USA has been the greatest collaborative partner out there. They really have supported us along the journey. They gave us the support early on to find our legs and to find our audience. And anytime we want to try something outside the box, they've always said, go ahead, go for it. Talking to Dulé Hill about After Midnight and, of course, his hit series. Psych, which I absolutely love. Um, do you think the show ever would have happened on network TV? Psych? 
Yeah. Uh, I think if it was picked up, it probably would not have lasted past the first season. They probably would have would have canceled it. And that's what I really enjoy about USA is they stick with their product. They really try to give it a chance to, to thrive. And I wish that networks would do more of that. Sometimes shows just need a little bit of time to find exactly where their lane is and for the audience to find that lane also and then for them to sync up. So what's next? I don't know, you know. I've learned to trust God for each day. You know, he has me here right now and I'm very thankful. And he says, rest here for a second and when what comes next comes, you'll know. Any advice for Tony Braxton who's coming and joining the team soon? I don't think Tony Braxton needs advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> I might call her and get advice from her, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tony's another phenomenal talent, so I think both she and Babyface are going to come and really knock the show out the park. So if you've seen it with myself and Fantasia, I'd definitely say come back and see it with Tony and Babyface because it's going to be a whole other different vibe and they'll bring their whole nuance to it, which is going to be phenomenal. I know I'm going to come back and see it. I know I am. I'll be there. I'll be there too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Pleasure cool. to meet you. All the best. <laughs> you Blessings. Too. Cool. You too. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Uh-huh. It's Cafe Mocha. Tony Braxton and Babyface are headed to Broadway to do After Midnight. But before they get there, they're doing something even more exciting. To talk about it, I've got Lee Davenport, editorial director of HelloBeautiful.com. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So tell us about the Tony Braxton Babyface concert. It was certainly a night to remember. Um, December 4th in New York at the Highline Ballroom, uh, HelloBeautiful.com hosted Tony Braxton and Babyface for our Interlude Live series, which is going to air on TV One on February 8th at 10 p.m. And when I tell you they shut it down, (laughs) they shut it down. I mean, they were in tip-top shape. It was a show that, you know, really let you know that we were in the presence of musical legends. Now, um, what what can we expect musically? So musically, um, you know, they really treated us to a show. You know, Tony Braxton and Babyface are uh, promoting their new album, Love, Marriage, and Divorce. And uh-huh. so they've got, you know, some great new songs out. Hurt mm-hmm. You was number one on iTunes. And yeah. so, of course, we were excited to hear, you know, the songs from the new album. One of the songs was just absolutely beautiful. And I really love Roller Coaster, and it was great. But the highlight of the show, of course, is that they're going to sing all of your favorite jams from their massive catalogs, respectively. I mean, Toni Braxton's got Unbreak Your Heart and all of her first album, Love Should Have Brought You Home, another sad love song. You know, those songs that make you feel something special when you hear it. And Babyface's catalog cannot be named. Um, It was really kind of amazing. You know that he's pinned so many records for so many people actually start singing all of those records it's like wow this guy is like out of this world Woo, and, I can't wait to see this oh, and again it's, good. it's legitimately good when when should we tune in February 8th that's a Saturday night on TV one at 8 p.m. that's right before Valentine's Day get all warm and cuddly mm-hmm. and then he'll go to the R stall game <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Lee Lee thank Davenport. You so and much. Thank you. I love HelloBeautiful.com, by the way. Yeah. We love you. We need to talk to you guys, all of you, both soon. All righty. Okay. Take Thanks, care. Lee. Bye-bye. This is your Cafe Mocha Espresso. I'm Angelique doing something different this week. On my way to see After Midnight with our grand prize winner... Kim Fio. We just left the Cecil in Harlem. Food was what? Wonderful! Backstage at the play after midnight with our winner, Kim Fields. What'd you think? I thought it was awesome. I couldn't stay still. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. What was your favorite part? Oh my gosh, all of it. I mean, the Fantasia singing, oh my God, blew me away when she sang Stormy Weather did it. Backstage at After Midnight with Dulé Hill, who I love you in sight. Oh, thank you, thank you. Any advice for Tony Braxton, who's coming and joining the team soon? I don't think Tony Braxton needs advice from me. (laughs) (laughs) I might call her and get advice from her, you know what I mean? (laughs) Tony's another phenomenal talent, so I think both she and Babyface are going to come and really knock the show out the park. So if you've seen it 
with myself and Fantasia, I'd definitely say come back and see with Tony and Babyface because it's going to be a whole other different vibe and they'll bring their whole nuance to it, which is going to be phenomenal. Live backstage at After Midnight, that's your Cafe Mocha Espresso. I'm Angelique. This is Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. You are now locked into the light mix. I'm MC Light. Angelique, Lonnie Love on standby. This is how we do it every weekend. Make sure to check us out. Facebook, Twitter. We're doing it big willy style. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. It's Cafe Mocha. Everybody get up. It's the Light Mix Lightro at your service on the ones and twos. This is Tina Marie. We shout you out and send you peace and love. Peace and love. God bless you. Tina Marie, come on. Woo. Yeah. Check us out at CafeMochaRadio.com. Look us up on Twitter and Facebook. We're waiting I for you. I think I was going to see you again. Come and join the movement. Holla! See you haven't changed. <laughs> it's Cafe Mocha. This is the light mix. Yours truly, MC Light. I tell you what, it's all about the Cafe Mocha movement. We are at Cafe Mocha on Twitter. Check us out. Ho! Oh. It's Cafe Mocha. That was the MC Light Light Mix. You know, I really, as a parent, I'm going to look for that book on Amazon or something. Mm-hmm. Um, how, to ra- how to Raise a Successful Kid by Paul Tuff. Ooh. T-O-U-G-H. It's like tough. Yeah. And um, I just love what the, the Dr. Tart was saying about how the, the most successful kids aren't the ones that had all the money or all the access to everything. They had resilience and grit, ambition and integrity. And if you don't believe that, look at Justin Bieber. A hundred million dollars and youth don't go together. We'll see y'all next week. Cafe Mocha. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in association with Cumulus Media Networks. Executive producer Sheila Eldridge, writer and producer Angelique Perrin. For comments and more information, visit CafeMochaRadio.com.